Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good confidently plan, launch and manage your products and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan. I'm your host, Catherine Erdley, as well as the founder of the Resilient Retail Club, which is my membership group and consultancy for product businesses. You can find out more at resilientretailclub.com. And if you're a podcast listener, you can get £10 off your first month by using the code 10podcast. That's one zero podcast. So today I am talking about Christmas. It's funny because I talk about Christmas a lot on particularly on Instagram if you're not following me on Instagram do head over to at resilient retail club and say hi because I share a lot of tips and thoughts about all kinds of things to do with growing sales and profits but particularly recently I've been talking a lot about Christmas and it's funny because when I looked at the podcast lineup over the last few weeks or when I was planning out the episodes I realized although I think I've been talking about Christmas a lot and certainly we've been talking about it in the club There's a whole section of the Resilient Retail Club, which is dedicated to Christmas, everything from how to get ready to planners to information about Christmas events and Christmas promotions. So there's a huge amount of content that I've produced around Christmas and in the membership. Certainly, I've been talking about it a lot as well as on social media. But I realized I actually haven't had too many podcast episodes that are Christmas themed. And so here we are in September. And I wanted to kick us off for the first, I think of it as the first sort of full working week back in September after the kids go back to school. And it's a really good time to start thinking about Christmas. So what I wanted to do for today's episode, instead of going through so much about how to prepare or what to be thinking about, I wanted to talk more specifically about my general predictions for Christmas, what I think is going to be happening over the next few months. And of course, If we had a crystal ball, wouldn't life be really fantastic? But we don't. So I wanted to share instead my thoughts on what I think Christmas is going to look like for a lot of small businesses. And more importantly, as always, not just what I think it's going to look like, but what that actually means for you and what you need to be doing. So I'm going to share with you three predictions based on conversations that I've been having with lots of businesses, but also a lot of the research that I read to do with the retail industry, a lot of the conversations that I have with retail experts as well and the retail news that I read and give you my thoughts about what is going to happen. The first prediction is that people are going to be more cautious with their spending this year for sure. Personally, if I were doing a Christmas sales plan for my business, I would be looking on the conservative side. Now, if you've heard me talk about sales planning before, you know that I always believe that you should have a couple of different plans. If possible, you should have the plan that you realistically think you're going to do. You should have a plan that is your stretch target. So what it would be nice for you to do. And then also almost like a bit of a worst case scenario, just so you can really check the cash flow situation and, and everything else. Just make sure that if these were the sales I took, what would, what else would I need to do? But this Christmas, when you're creating that, effectively that realistic viewpoint, I would tend to be more conservative this year. I just can't really see a way in which Christmas is going to be a bumper Christmas this year, because unless you've been under a rock, then you'll have heard everything in the news about the cost of living crisis, fuel, inflation, everything else. So I believe that people will still be purchasing at Christmas, but I do believe that they're going to be really considered with their purchasing. I was reading something that was talking about the cutback economy, this idea that people are going to be really watching their spending. And even if they're still prioritizing Christmas spending, which I think a lot of people will be doing, I just don't see that there's going to be a lot of extra cash splashing around. 
And I think I would have a look at your business and ask yourself, how's it been trading in the year so far? Are there specific reasons behind it trading? So for example, if you've known it's been trading up because of something you're doing that's not going to be applicable at Christmas, then again, be more conservative. But if you've been trading 50% up on the year, then in your case, I wouldn't say you should plan your Christmas down. But if you've given the choice between planning it, say, 40% up and 60% up, then I'd probably go for the more conservative 40% up. So it's going to look very different business by business because businesses have both a natural trajectory. So as they grow, they tend to get bigger. Their sales go up. But equally, there's going to be other elements as well. So I think if anything, we'll see Christmas spending slightly down. That's not to say at all that it's going to be catastrophic and nobody's going to be buying anything. And I think more than any time, it's important to stay away from that black and white thinking and really consider that people are still going to be spending. There is going to be money going into the economy at Christmas. You have to be there, present, best foot forward to take advantage of that. But at the same time, if I were putting together a sales plan for a product business, as I do with a lot of one-to-one clients, I wouldn't be bullish this year compared to last year. I wouldn't be saying, oh, yeah, we're def, you know, we're 20% up in the year, but I think we're going to smash Christmas at 100%. Again, now, if you know that you've got new sales channels opening up at Christmas, if you know that you've got new products coming in, you've been out of stock most of the year, and you know that you're going to get some of your best products back in just before Christmas, well, fine, that's that's up to you. You know your business better than anybody else, and maybe you do want to be a little bit more aggressive as it were or bullish about your Christmas sales but I would say in general if you're planning out your Christmas sales this is not the year to really really be going for it and I would pay special attention to what I refer to as the brown bananas so anything that is going to go out of favor on the 26th of December those are the things that I would be super cautious with this year so in other words anything that is particularly Christmassy even if it's to the extent to which is is it possible to switch things out, whereas maybe you had the majority of your promotions at Christmas were around products that were super Christmassy. Is there anything that you can even swap out this time around so that you can make sure that you're promoting products, for example, that could live on to January if you don't sell them at Christmas? All things for you to be thinking about this year at Christmas. Another element of this is really price points. Think about your price points that you're offering And are you offering a range of price points that are accessible to people who have different purposes for purchasing? There's always a different range of price points that's bought at Christmas from stocking stuffers to secret Santa to larger gifts for people. So I think this year more than ever, though, you need to pay attention to that real sweet spot. Maybe it's that 20 to 30 pound price point. But then also thinking about what you can offer that is what we call an entry level price point. Are there more items that you could develop for that end of the price range? Just to acknowledge the fact that people may be still wanting to purchase a gift, but they may be wanting to spend a little bit less, for example, than previous years. That said, I'm a big believer in price points at Christmas time is really experimenting with them. If you're a business that is able to play around with the more expensive end of the price point, so maybe a 75 or a 95 pound gift, then I definitely feel that it's worth trying because yes, there may be fewer people buying 75 pound, 95 pound gifts, but equally there are going to be the people who were spending 120 pounds who are now spending 95. There's all different price points. And I think a lot of small businesses often miss out on this higher price point at Christmas because they make the assumption that people don't want to purchase them. Now, if you have to go out and have this more expensive product manufactured for you, or you have to put a lot of money into stock to purchase it in, then that's one thing that is a little riskier, if you like, if you don't have proof that you can sell these higher price points. It's not so much that that I'm talking about. It's more the people who have lower price point items, but can you put together a gift set, for example, that is a higher price point that is maybe that $75.95. And it could be as simple as putting together multiples of what you're already selling so that if people don't buy it, they don't buy it, but you use the components in lots of different ways. Equally, you want to make sure that you have that higher price point as well as the lower price points. I think it's really about as far as possible having that breadth of offer. So you're both capturing the customer that has less to spend and wants to pick up a really great gift at an affordable price point, as well as the customer who does want to spend a bit more because I think there will be those customers out there. And to be honest, they're probably the people who are the most immune 
to the current cost of living crisis if they have got the kind of money or they or they have more disposable income. Basically, the higher people's disposable income, the the less likely it is that they're going to completely cut back on their Christmas spending. Well, at least that's just my opinion. So something to think about, making sure that you've got price points to really cover the different ends of the spectrum. And the second point I wanted to make, or the second prediction, is that we're going to be hearing more and more about customers spreading the cost of Christmas. So last year, we had some rumours that maybe Christmas would be early. It was early in 2020 because people were just fed up of lockdown and they wanted something nice to do and Christmas shopping seemed to be a good start. In 2021, we saw a mix. We saw some people who were organised and wanted to buy early because there was a lot of talk last year about disruptions, disruptions to the supply chain and people being worried about not getting availability for their Christmas gifts, so they were purchasing them early. I think overall, though, in 2021, the Christmas demand came quite late. So lots of people were seeing it kick in, but not really until quite late in the day in December. I think this year is going to have a similar feel to it in as much as there are going to be people who want to shop early because they want to spread the cost of Christmas. They want to start putting a few things aside from each paycheck so that when it comes to December, they're not doing all of their Christmas shopping at once. However, I don't think that is going to be everybody. And I wouldn't from this rush to launch all of your Christmas products early, super early, try and get them out there, try and get them all listed, ready to go and start shouting about them in September. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think there will equally be a fair number of people who do want to leave it quite late or may not have the choice, may just have to leave it quite late depending on their purchasing power. And so I think that we will see that somewhat polarised demand again. So some people in September, some people nearer to Christmas. But what I do think it's worth talking about in September is even if you don't have all of your Christmas range launched, even if you don't have everything ready to go on your website, it's just mentioning to your customers in September. If anybody is thinking about doing a bit of early Christmas shopping, here are my top three picks And you can highlight things from your existing product range. A lot of small businesses, because they tend to be design led, because they tend to be higher quality in a more premium price point, they tend to have large numbers of products in their range that can be gifts or are used as gifts. Therefore, these could be the perfect opportunities for you to talk about early Christmas shopping with your customer without having to have your true Christmas range, if you like, all up and ready to go. Because chances are most of the products that you've currently got in your range could easily be given as a gift. So I would do almost a bit of soft, light touch messaging around this in September. Just a reminder, if you are doing any purchasing, then you can purchase from, these are our top picks for gifts and you can put them aside or however you want to do it. Of course, there is the rise in the buy now, pay later. So you have lots of big platforms like Etsy adopting it over a certain price point. And you have a lot of people adding it to their website. So these are the people like Klarna or Clearpay or even PayPal will offer to allow you to pay in installments. That has to be a personal decision, I think, for each business owner. I know that buy now, pay later. It's one of those things that people have mixed opinions about. And of course, as a business owner, you have to make the decision that's right for you and the way what fits with your business. There's been some controversy about buy now, pay later in terms of encouraging spending, that kind of thing, encouraging debt. Although arguably some people feel that it's not that different from, for example, credit cards, there has been... I think I've probably had quite a few conversations with business owners over time about whether or not they feel comfortable. And I would always be led by what you think and what you feel comfortable with. I have certainly seen it help with conversion, especially if you've got a higher price point item. But I don't know that I could necessarily hand on my heart say that I've spoken to people where it's completely transformed their business and they've gone from you know, their sales have suddenly skyrocketed when they've added something like Klarna or Clearpay or any of the other many buy now, pay later offers. So I really do think it has to be up to you. But just be aware, again, tapping into what's going on right now, this whole idea about spreading payments, spreading the cost of Christmas is definitely something I think that is going to come up time and time again. Or even if there's an opportunity to 
keep hold of something. If if somebody wants to send it directly to somebody that you could offer that they purchase it, you can give them a preferred shipment date so they could even buy from you early and then have it shipped out at a certain date. There's lots of different things that you can do to think about. But again, just putting yourself in your customer's perspective and thinking about all the different ways that you can be useful to them. And then the final piece that I wanted to talk about, the final prediction for Christmas is that despite all of this, or maybe because of all of this, people are really looking for Christmas to be magical and special. We're still in a way scarred, if you like, by the memory of Christmases that we've missed with loved ones over the last couple of years, whether it was through lockdowns in 2020, whether it was through illness in 2021 or people having to cancel or feeling uncertain, all of these different things. So people are really looking to Christmas as a time to reconnect with family and to have a special time. Also as well, because again, it's been another tough year, surprise, surprise. So a lot of people I think will be looking to have that special time reconnecting with their families. There is a lot to suggest that people will still be looking, even though they may be cutting back, they're still wanting it to be special and and unique and different. And part of that comes from buying from small businesses. I was lucky enough earlier this year to meet the Etsy trend expert, Dana Isom Johnson, at an Etsy event. And she was talking very much about this prediction for the magical Christmas. So lots of personalization, lots of special food and drinks, special celebrations, time together as a family, all of those things that will that we really look to Christmas to be. Again, going back to this idea that we missed a lot of that, maybe missed a lot of family celebrations in general during the COVID era. So bear that in mind. And I think that the two elements, this idea of it being affordable and it being special are not mutually exclusive. And I know that I've had a lot of conversations with people who are in the more premium end of the market, and they've been struggling with how to reconcile talking about the affordability with the luxury and aspirational elements. And I would say that's probably true for a lot of people whose products are a little bit more premium, which a lot of small businesses fall into that category because we don't tend to be people who compete on price, which we're people who compete on the beauty and the uniqueness and the quality of our products. So from that basis, how do you reconcile talking about the special nature of something and the fact that it's affordable? And quite simply, I think a lot of that is about price points. So talking about gifts under £10, gifts under £20. So it's one thing to say, and I doubt very much anyone would say anything like this, but oh, we've got cheap, you know, don't worry if you've not got much to spend, if you're on a tight budget and you want to squeeze in, we've got lots of economical value gifts. That doesn't sound as premium as just simply saying, we have gifts here at every price point. Uh, Under £20, we have XYZ. Under £40, we have XYZ under 50 whatever it may be. So typical price points might be £5, £10, £25, £30, £40, £50, £75, £100. Those are all those kind of psychological price points. So you can simply talk about what you've got in that range. And it's also important to remember that it's not really about the price point. It's about the luxury element of the product. So you can, for example, it's one of the reasons I think stationary, luxury stationery is always really wonderful because a luxurious notebook might set you back, say, 30 or even 40 pounds, maybe even more if it's a true top end leather notebook, for example. But that's still compared to, for example, a handbag. It's a totally different pricing structure. You could have a five pound premium notebook. You could have a, a seven pound premium chocolate bar, for example. So something being a lower price point does not is not mutually exclusive with it being a value product, if that makes sense. In a way, the customer wants even more than anything else. If they are on a budget, they want to be able to spend both £10 and get something really special and different for their loved ones. So the onus is on us as business owners when we're talking about our products to really highlight what makes it special and different, no matter what the price point is. If you've got a seven pound bar of chocolate that's just amazing because it's from single source cocoa beans and it's made in a small cooperative where 15% of the profits is going to help people have a better education and workshops and feeding their children, whatever else it might be, 
those are all messages that you can share with your customer because effectively when you're sharing that message with your customer, you're allowing them to then gift that story to their loved one when they gift them that gift. And that is really a big part of of creating value. So I often talk about the value triangle when it comes to price. And that is when people are thinking about they don't buy things because they're a certain price. They buy them because they represent excellent value. And that could be a seven pound chocolate bar. It could be a 35 pound notebook. It could be a 250 pound bag or a 300 pound dress or whatever it may be. If they believe that the price that they're paying is good value for what they're getting, then they will purchase it. And value is not the same as saying cheap. It means that the money that you're paying for something is is at the right level for what you're getting, really. So in order to talk about the value to your customer, you've got to think about the elements that make up the value triangle. So one of those elements is the price, obviously. And I do believe as well, going back to price, this is not the year to be coy about your prices. If you're talking about something on social media, tell people how much it is. If you're putting together a gift guide for your products or you're sending out emails, tell people how much they are. Don't make them guess. Don't make them check it out because I think people will have a set amount in mind that they're looking to spend. You don't know what that is. It could be £25 and your item's 20 That's great. Tell them about it. This is not the year to be coy about your pricing. So the price obviously goes up into making the value triangle, but then quality is a big piece of that. And that is not just the quality of the materials. It could be the quality of the way it's manufactured. It could be the quality of it is the fact that it's unique and different and that you have worked really long and hard to find something that meets all of your values, for example. Desirable is another element of the triangle. And that's much, much harder to quantify. It's the sort of secret sauce, if you like, for selling products. It's it's the products that make people just have an emotional reaction to them. We used to call them emotional must-haves. And I worked with one buying director who would always talk about it as like a sharp intake of breath. If somebody sees your product and they go, oh, then that's when you know that you've hit that desirability. And what that does is it gives you a little bit more of a price elasticity. It doesn't necessarily mean you can charge three times as much as you would otherwise be able to. But if people want something, then they're willing to pay it that little bit extra. And to be honest, they're willing to buy it at all, which in today's day and age is really important because customers are being very considered with their purchasing. So when you're thinking about your pricing, think about how do you make it as desirable as possible, which is a lot to do with trialing things, testing things, as well as knowing your customer really well and what's just going to make them absolutely love it. And talk about the value. And I think that's a really good place to position your messaging in this year of, well, it's, it's a good place to position your messaging ever. But in this year of all years, talk about the value. Talk about everything that's gone into the products. And don't forget about the multiplier questions, the who, where, when, why, what and how. How is it made? Who is it for? Why did you pick it? Why is it the perfect gift for X, Y, Z? All of those different elements. Make sure that you are really exploring those with your customer because they want to both buy something at a certain price point, but they don't want to buy something that's cheap and cheap and nasty, to be honest. Most people that you're going to be talking to, most of you, your ideal customer is going to be wanting something meaningful, something lovely and something that fits their budget. So make sure that you really talk about no matter what the price point is, whether it's from the lowest price point to the highest price point, talk about the value, talk about the quality, talk about what makes it special and different. And that not only gives them the insight into the way to help their help them gift that story then to their recipient, but it also helps them make that decision. And it's an interesting one because I know I have talked about this before on social media and I was asked the question about, well, I feel really awkward and difficult and I find it really hard to talk and I feel sleazy or salesy or as soon as I start feeling like I'm going to talk about it, then I almost switch off. But I think that it's it's so fascinating to me because people will often tell me this. And yet if you go to an event and people are talking to you face to face and you start asking them about the products, they often will light up and they will start telling you all of these things. And they'll tell me how they came up with the idea and why it's a bestseller and who has bought it and what they said about it and how they loved it. 
So a lot of people find this easier in person than they do online, but it's effectively exactly the same thing. So if it helps you to set up, set yourself up as if you're talking to somebody at a, an event, then and imagine that when you're talking on camera on Instagram or wherever else it is, then think about that. Just think about being descriptive. That's all it is. It's just describing things to your customers so that they can make the decision about whether or not it is right. So there are my three predictions. People will be watching what they spend. Think about your price points, but equally don't forget about those higher price points because I would say in general, small businesses tend to not have so much of a focus on those higher price points. Think about the fact that people want to spread the cost. So maybe mention what would be a good thing to purchase in September, even if you don't have your full range launched and help them make it special. Help them understand why your products make it special for them and help them gift, not just the gift, but also the story of why it's so wonderful to their loved ones and help make them have a magical Christmas too. So that's it. I'd love to you to come over to Resilient Retail Club on Instagram. Say hi. Let me know what you thought of today's episode. Let me know what you are going to do about Christmas, what your plans are. And if you do have a moment to rate and review the podcast, I appreciate it so much. Thank you to everyone who has left a review. I appreciate it hugely. And I read all of them and it really makes my day. So thank you. On iTunes, you can both rate and review. On Spotify, you can rate the podcast within the app. And of course, if you subscribe or follow the podcast, then you'll be the first to know about all of the new episodes. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while but want to get more focused and organised when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month and a supportive and active community, The Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.